Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Great to have you back again. I'm just walking down my driveway today. We are in lockdown and I'm going to check my letterbox. Um, because of that, I'm gonna leave you guys in the hands of me um, as I show you how I multi-list stuff, um, cross post, and give you a bit of a rundown on Poshmark, Depop, and eBay, and how they, they integrate together. Um, I'm not brilliant at any of them, but hopefully this helps. If you guys have any tips that I could learn, um, drop them in the comments below. Um, if there's anything that, more questions you've got of me, um, also drop them in the, the comments below, but otherwise, um, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. All right, guys, um, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to this. Um, as, I sh as I talked about, I'm gonna take you through the three main um, elements that I sell through. Obviously eBay, Poshmark, and Depop. Um, I'll give you a bit of my feedback on them, what I think of them, um, and then where to from, from there. Um, so first of all, eBay is my main um, hub that I sell through. Um, yeah, so I, I have the most of my listings through here, or I have all of my listings through here. Um, so 726 items currently active. Um, and that is, you know, I think, I think we all know eBay. Um, it's pretty easy. This is how I have my listings set up, what I like to see. I have my custom SKU there, um, how many I have, watches, views, etc. I come through here daily. Um, I always go and I take anything that is finishing or has finished today and I will end the listing um, and then I'll go, once they've ended, I'll go to my unsold and I'll tick all and sell similar. Um, if I've got time during the day, I will sometimes individually sell similar. Um, just it, I, I get the alert then via email that I've, I've ended it and relisted it. Um, it just works well that way, I think. But I do always get a bit of traction when I end and sell similar. So that's that's what I do there. Um, in regards to Poshmark, um, I'll take you through to my closet. Um, so Poshmark and Depop, I'm just using for clothes at the moment. Um, so again, I've got 408 listings there, uh, 500 followers, and I follow 110. Essentially, I only follow Australian people. I don't follow people overseas. I don't get that whole thing, especially seeing as I can't purchase from overseas. If they made it international, then maybe. Um, I don't spend a lot of time sharing items on here. So the idea with um, Poshmark is on your home page. It's kind of like a social media concept. And you know, you can go through, you can see all this sort of stuff, different things shared from people's closets, etc. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really not one to do a heap. You can sell other things like books and homewares, etc. I'm just sticking to shoes and clothes at the moment, um, and that's working well for me. Um, I'll show you then here. So my sales, I don't get a heap of sales, um, but I've had a few, which is nice. Um, most of them are five stars. I did have one defect here uh, where they cancelled it. Again, because I don't use Poshmark a lot, that was at the very start. I had received the email in, I didn't actually save the email, I filed it away, and therefore when I went to packing, I didn't actually um, pack it and send it. And then I realized just after it needed to be sent that I'd, I'd missed the cutoff time, and so the person had the right to cancel it and give me one star. Um, so I'm happy to wear that because it is my fault. Um, and then pretty much from there, I've, I've pretty much only gotten five stars. This person, they knew that they, like, this person gave me a rating simply because they thought the shoes were a bit dirty when they arrived. Um, you know, I, I have all the photos of all the angles of the shoe. Um, that's the exact state that they were sent in. So I'm not sure what they expected. I mean, there's a little bit of mess on the bottom there. You can see where I've been trying to clean it. Um, yeah, it was just, I think they just wanted to whinge for the sake of whinging potentially. Uh, but yeah, so that goes really well. Um, so. Poshmark, I won't go to sell on Poshmark just yet. I'll take you through that in a little bit. Um, so when you're in your closet on Poshmark, you can actually see, uh, where are we? Um, I can't see it there. Must only be on, oh, must only be on the, 
the app. That's right. I'll put it up on the app. I'll screen capture that for you. But essentially, you can only um, your money gets held by Poshmark until the buyer receives the item. Uh, they then have two days to review it. If there are any issues, um, they can send it back and get a full refund. Um, and then essentially after the two days, if they haven't approved it, it will auto get approved and then you have your funds available. From there, you can then transfer those funds from Poshmark into your PayPal and then do as you please. Um, so that's how Poshmark works in regards to paying and organizing all that sort of stuff. Um, Depop here, very similar. You've got all sorts of different stuff again, you know, tools, makeup, etc. more, lots of stuff. Again, uh, I'll go through to my profile. What's going on here? Depop's just crashed itself on me for some reason. I don't know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so on Depop again, only, only clothes, shoes, hats, all that sort of stuff again. Um, the do thing I do like about Depop um, compared to Poshmark is that once you've sold something in Poshmark, uh, like, sorry, once you've sold something off Poshmark, um, you either have to mark it as not for sale or remove it. So I remove everything I sell, whereas with Depop, you still have the ability to show it as being sold. Um, so if I go down to the bottom of my profile, you'll see I've got I've got the page of essentially showing everything that I've sold, both here, eBay, Poshmark. It's, it's just sort of, I think it gives credibility to the seller that they've had all this stuff up and then it's gone, uh, it's moved on. So I, I quite like that aspect of it. So here we, we start hitting all the stuff that I've sold um, and yeah, it shows that. So I think that's pretty a pretty cool element of that. So if anyone goes to look at my closet, they can see all this stuff that I show as being sold. Um, it doesn't say which ones have sold on here or anywhere else, but just it's a good way, I think, of being able to show that to people. Um, so yeah. Now in regards to selling on here, the different platforms do have different pricing. Um, eBay, we all know, um, it depends on what you're selling. Um, and then obviously if you want to promote it, etc. Poshmark is a 20% fee uh, regardless of what it is that you sell um, and so when you do actually go through the process of listing your item um, right down the bottom here it's got the price now they do ask for the original price which i think is a bit weird um, because sometimes we don't know what the original price is i normally if i don't really know and i can't find it i'll normally put it as a 50 percent markup on what i'm trying to sell so let's say I'm trying to sell something for $40, I'll list it at $60. Um, I don't do any discounted shipping, but it does show you what your earnings will be when sold right here. Um, now that can change um, because if you make an offer to someone, you're always required to put a discounted shipping on there. Um, so sometimes that will that earnings will change. But when you make someone an offer, it gives you that option to see what it will be as well. Um, there are additional details similar to to, um, to eBay that you can put a, a SKU in there for where you're holding your product. I just use my eBay SKU. Um, I just look through there. I make sure I cancel the item and before I delete it off my uh, unsold items, I always pull it so I can I can get it off that SKU. You put your cost price and any other info you need in there. Um, and then here on Depop, Depop is just a standard 10% fee, um, which is nice and simple, easy to deal with. You know, there's no questions about it. So um, I'll take you through the differences in listing. Um, I, I will, I don't really, what have I got? I've got something, I'll just pull up something that I've, uh, done recently just so you can sort of get an idea. Okay, I've sold the Golden State Warriors shirt. That's a, that's a good one. Let's just do that. Um, Golden State Warriors Majestic shirt. I don't think it was Majestic, but that's okay. We'll just go with that. Um, basketball, clothing, footwear, other. I'll just go other for this one so we can get through. All right, so we're there. Um, we put our label however we choose to. Um, I'll just show you sort of what I had as my label. Uh, bow, bow. Oh, 
on that one. There we go. All right, so this this is what my labels normally look like. Um, there you go, it's a 47 brand, 47. Um, and then I'll just change that, add there. And this is how I, I, I will multi-list something. I will do it all in one hit like this. So you'll see I'll just click through each page and add bits as I go through. Uh, so from here, I'll always list um, how the listing looks, so very good quality. And I try and get in there free postage. Um, it just captures people. They're the main things I add is the quality and the postage. Uh, I'll put in the SKU, which in this case was C11, uh, the category, clothing, UPC does not apply, condition pre-owned. Here I'll restate that, very good, and I'll put C images. It's just what I, I do. You may do different things and that's awesome. Um, then I'll come through to my photos. Um, I'll grab my photos, so I've got three for this. Um, sometimes I'll take more, depends on the item. Uh, but for this shirt, I had three, which were um, front, back, and then a close up on the tag. Um, so you can see there, that's got the 100% um, cotton size, um, wash cold, all that sort of stuff. And otherwise you've just got the front and the back images. Um, so I'll go through and I'll add those to each of the different pages. Like I say, this, this realistically adds almost zero time on and there's zero cost in doing this um, to actually multi-list. The biggest challenge is obviously on the back end when you sell, making sure you actually separate uh, the stuff that has sold from one site off another. Um, then here, I will always add a description that's normally for sale is a uh, 47 Golden State Warriors uh, NBA t-shirt. Shirt is gray and sized medium it is in very good used condition all right so i've then got my description it's pretty much the same as what i said in the title um, i always pull that down so you can see the majority of whatever the the graphic hit is uh, there we go and i'll just copy that across so it's all pretty much the same stuff that you're putting into the, into these things. So $39.99, I'll do the shirt at, I do all of my stuff as a $1.99. So if you're ever watching the channel, you see me sell something that is like a, a round figure, 100% I've made an offer to someone or they've made an offer to me. Otherwise, it's always that. Um, I know all my clothes pretty much fit in a small. Um, there's a few that don't, but that means that all of my smalls are 20, 20 by five. I do everything at a kilo for international. Um, it just, it overestimates. You'll notice as well, I've got a $5 handling fee. I do calculated cost varies by buyer location, worldwide, Auspost International, and a three-day handling time. Um, it's, that's just standard across the board. I do a 5% boost, um, and I always put volume pricing on, and I would normally hit list, but I'm not gonna list it um, there. I'll take you through here. So then categories, so you do select the category with Poshmark, a bit like Depop, men's, shirts, tees, short sleeve, um, but you can see you've got so many other things there. I'll go back to all categories. You've got pets, you've got home, you know, you've got party supplies, kitchen, holiday. So you can sell anything you want on here. I just, I've just not had the time to really um, move into that just yet. Um, and that goes, I mean, like even in men's clothes and women's clothes, there's so many different things in here. Um, so I just stick with the things I know for now. Um, this is just so you guys can see, does the item have tags attached? So there you can actually, if you had something that was new with tags, you could hit yes, and you could create a boutique. Um, I don't do anything in a boutique. I leave everything out of. Um, I don't really like that because it does say here, um, an item is boutique if it has been purchased directly from a brand or distributor and is now being sold for the first time. Um, I can never confirm that it's 100% being sold for the first time. Everything I sell, I, I, if it is new with tags, I always go no. Um, I just find that's better. Uh, 47, so you can see it will automatically complete that. Like if I wanted to do something Adidas, auto complete. Um, you know, I'm just seeing if it's gonna, oh no, it's not gonna even, uh, what, what's something else? Uh, Tommy Hilfiger, 
Is it going to do it? No, it's not doing it now that I've already selected one, I think. Um, but that's okay. So 47. Um, colors on it are gray and yellow. And then I can do tags. So MBA, Golden State Warriors. Um, and I could do another one if I wanted to, but that's okay. I'm not going to at the moment. Original plot price, like I said, I'll just do 60 and 40. And you'll see here, it shows you your earnings when sold. So I can then marry that up against that item. So 32 there. If I sell it at 32, it costs me $3.50. Um, so I'm going to make 28 50 off that. Um, and the reason why is because Poshmark actually cover the freight for anything that you sell through them. Um, so super, super good. Um, and then obviously for sale, not for sale drops. So you can actually preview stuff so that it's gonna drop. Um, I haven't done any of that, but you can do drops and you can have everything ready so it just drops when you want it to. Um, yeah, I mean, if I was if I was like a proper boutique, I'd probably use that drop. So that's that. And then I'd hit next to, to actually list it. And then we come through to Depop is the third one I do. Um, again, you can only do four photos on Depop. So if you've got a listing, like eBay lets you do up to 12. Poshmark lets you do 16, 2, 4, 6, uh, no, 18. They let you do 20 photos now. Okay, it was, it was less than that previously. It's obviously gone up. Uh, you can also do videos on, on Poshmark. And you can do, uh, uh, I thought you could do videos on Depop. Pretty certain you can. I don't know why it's not showing up there, but I'm, I'm pretty certain you can do videos on Depop. It might only be through the phone app. Um, so category-wise, we then select what it is. Menswear tops, same sort of thing. They've got women's wear and then everything else. Um, anything down here doesn't have a subcategory. So if you want to sell something kids-wise, it's just kids, that's it. There's nothing else. Um, whereas for men's or women's, you've got these subcategories and then from there even further. So I can go tops. Um, I'm going to go down to t-shirts, brand, 47, I type it in, it brings it up there, condition. This as well is something that you don't have on, um, uh, on Poshmark or eBay, and I quite like, is actually they give a fair indication as to what they expect things to be, brand new, like new, used excellent, used good, and used fair. Um, used excellent, I'd really try not to sell anything on any site that's used fair. I've never done. Used good, I have occasionally, and normally that's something vintage or something like very desirable, collectible, etc. that uh, I know someone's going to want even, even with some minor flaws. Um, so used excellent. Pick the size, medium, color. We go through gray and yellow. Source, pre-loved, 47 I count as a designer. It's modern, style is streetwear or sportwear. You've got heaps of other style options there. Um, I always offer free shipping through Depop. And then I'll just chuck on the price of $39.99 and then post. So that is how I go through posting on the three pages, guys. Um, I'll just bring up through my email just so you can see. Wrong page. That's personal email. <laughs> uh, on Poshmark, what it looks like when you get your label. Um, so essentially, you'll get a request here. Uh, where are we? Here's a good one. So I sold a Las Vegas Raiders Majestic shirt and then it asks you to go through a creative shipping label. So you go through, you follow that process. It asks if you want to drop it off, have it picked up. I have mine picked up by the driver here. Um, he comes past two to three times a week from Fastway. Really good. And then what they'll do is they'll send you out the prepaid mailing label. It's just that. Print it out on A4 page. Nice and easy. You can see Fastway there. Um, it's got everything you need. It, they don't have the ability to print it out on a, um, like a Dymo, Zebra, you know, Rolo, whatever you have printer. Um, I only have, they only have the capacity for that at the moment, um, but that's fine for me. I just go and print it off. I have to do that for any of my internationals as well. So that is essentially the process, guys, that I undertake with that. Um, I hope that's been helpful. I hope it can encourage some of you to go and grab your own, um, cross listing again it's really simple when you're doing it all together you saw that there one shirt and majority of the extra stuff it's you've already done it for the others and you just drop it's a, just a drop down menu um, so I can normally list when I'm not showing something I can normally get through an item of clothing in about three to five minutes pretty much um, 
and yeah, it's it's pretty easy. So I can sit here and get a whole bunch done within an hour while listening to a podcast, watching another video, whatever it may be. So look, drop a line down below if you need any assistance setting anything up or you don't understand anything, guys. I'm happy to help out where possible. Um, otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. And always remember, just keep flipping.